The reign of Solomon was a time of comfort and even wealth for the tribes of Israel subdued and faithful to the only authority of the king, the heir of the throne of David. Trade flourished under a respected and powerful king who defended it from the greed of the nearby nations. The law dictated by God to Moses was a rule for every Israelite. Life in the kingdom was dominated by the cult of Jehovah, the invisible and holy God, creator of heaven and earth, in the marvelous temple of Jerusalem, where the Ark of the Covenant stood as a tangible sign of the pact of fidelity made between God and his people. The Ark contained the stone tables on which were carved the commandments of the law. But as the years went by, many Israelis began to lose their faith in Jehovah because of the influence of the nearby nations and of the bad example set by the elders and the heads of tribes who got more and more greedy, clinging to their personal power and willing to do anything to increase it. You've I've made a good bargain, here. friend. Thank you. And I've made you a small gift. Ashtoreth, the blessed goddess of fertility. Why do you make us worship a foreign goddess? Jehovah has never let us down. Shut up, woman. Those who worship the goddess Ashtoreth always make good business and get rich. Then two gods are better than one. Well, you never know. And so people began to betray Jehovah and forget him. Bloody struggles erupted among the tribes and the cities of the children of Israel. New leaders and new kings were imposed over the people. New alliances were formed with nations and kings who worshipped gods of stone. Jehovah's love for those who remained faithful made him choose prophets among the children of his people. Men he inspired to talk in his name to the Israelis, to reprimand them of their unfaithfulness, to show them the path of salvation, the worship of the one and only true God, and the obedience of his law. But Jehovah loved his people, and he made rise up amongst those who had remained faithful in a family of poor basket weavers, a prophet by the name of Isaiah. His name signified God's help. Still young, Isaiah went from village to village and town to town, exhorting the people of Israel to return to the observance and faith in the law. Come on, come on, women, come on, ladies. Look at this wonderful material. Hear you heavens, give ear you earth. Israelis, listen to what the Lord says. Listen, 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 Israelis, I beg of you. Listen to what the Lord says. I have nourished and brought up children, but they have rebelled against me. Even the ox knows his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. They don't know their Lord anymore. My people have no intelligence, shouts Jehovah. Woe to the sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. Mercy, please, mercy, mercy. mercy. Seed of evildoers, children that corrupt themselves. They have forsaken their Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They turned their backs on him. Do you want to be struck again? The daughter of Zion is left alone. And if the Lord had not wanted to leave us something, we would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah, burnt by fire. Where are you going now, Isaiah? I go where Jehovah guides me. Blessed be his holy name. The prophets weren't sorcerers, magicians, clairvoyants, astrologers, or teachers of the occult sciences, but they were just simple men, faithful to Jehovah, who inspired them and sent them. 
Their testimony went across for centuries through the stories of the people of Israel. They were prophets like Moses, who had known Jehovah face to face and had made an eternal sacred covenant between him and his people. Moses, to whom Jehovah himself had transmitted the law for his people. There were many prophets through the centuries and their words were often ignored. These are the names of those who are most remembered for what they have left in writing, which is part of the Old Testament. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and also Hosea, Joel, Amos, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Achaz's reign, many forgot Jehovah's law. So Jehovah sent Isaiah to Jerusalem to reproach the king, to invite him and his people to trust the Lord and to warn them of the immediate punishment. The Assyrian army is marching against them. Isaiah, why do you want me to take you to King Ahaz? To admonish him in the name of the Lord Jehovah. The king is too cruel, and he's dragging Jerusalem to impiety. Aren't you aware of that? I know it, but you risk losing your neck. The king doesn't like those who reproach him. <laughs> Isaiah, no. Jerusalem, look at it. They don't want to fight, they want peace. Don't you agree, Isaiah? What will you do? The Assyrians are marching against Jerusalem. They're the strongest and I have to sign pacts with them, pay tributes. Will you hand them Jerusalem? I will open the city gates for his ambassadors. Do you understand? My motto is, it's better to pay than to die. Do you agree? If you submit to Jehovah, it will be you who will beat the Assyrian king. Jehovah does not want lies here. I told you Jerusalem doesn't want to fight. Look how serene it is, young prophet. You know all about the deepest desires of Jerusalem, but I know Jehovah's will. He doesn't want gods of stone to enter in the holy city. Jehovah, he says. But had he wanted to do it, the Assyrians wouldn't be here now. Anyway, we can think about it overnight. Did you think about what I said? You must order the children of Israel to return to their old traditions, to the fidelity to the law of Moses, to penitence and prayer. In return, your Lord and King, Jehovah the Almighty, will fight for you, and he will win. He doesn't listen to me. I, together with the people, always bring offerings to the temple, rams, steers, goats. I provide the priests with everything they need for the religious ceremony to serve the Almighty. All the feasts are celebrated with great care. I am satiated of the fat of your steers which burns on the altar. You force me to avert my eyes from you because your hands are stained with blood. And you are accomplices, accomplices of thieves. You all wait for tips and gifts, but you don't treat the orphan and the widow justly. How did Jerusalem, the faithful city, turn into a prostitute? How? And even in Jerusalem, the foreigners' gods of stone are now being worshipped. Answer, king. You stubborn prophet, you still don't want to understand. What harm is there if one puts the figurine of a foreign god in his house? It'll sometimes bring good luck. 
Jehovah can't be afraid of those statuettes. This way you offend Jehovah, King Akez. You offend him deeply. Then give me advice, Prophet. Perhaps the help of the Pharaoh of Egypt against the Assyrians could be useful. Is that the solution that will save the people of Israel? You have to repent with all your people. Huh? Hey! Don't hit him! The Prophet is a messenger of Jehovah! Let me at him. No! But he has offended you, my king. No, it doesn't matter. He sees what I don't see. Listen, no, my lord. Your people walk blindfolded and spend all their days in pain. Fear not. My people walk in darkness, but soon they will see the light. The darkness that totally envelops them is like an endless night. Fear not. A child shall be born. A son shall be given ah. us. The Prince of Peace. His government shall be great, and peace shall have no end on the throne of David. A bud shall sprout, and the Spirit of Jehovah shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Lord, I live with what you tell me. I wait for the light. But what will your people do now if they're blind and walk in the dark? For how long, Lord? For how long, Lord? Fear not, Isaiah. Where are you going, Prophet? This city is deaf to the voice of Jehovah. Won't you wait to see the ambassadors of the Assyrian king? While leaving Jerusalem, Isaiah sees the gods of stone around the city. When will your people leave the darkness that envelops them, my lord? Look at him! An Israeli escaping Jerusalem! Away from here, Jehovah! Take me away from here! The Assyrian army subdued Jerusalem. Akaz opened the gates to polytheism and closed the temple. This is the reason why he wouldn't be buried in the royal tombs. See, it's not hard. through, I need some help. I can write better than you. Let me see what you've done. <gasps> okay. Well done, you've improved. Isaiah, your son wants you. <laughs> You're beautiful, my son. You'll become a clever soldier of Jehovah. Who are they, father? The Assyrians. They've come back. But how many are they? 
Many, many more than a hundred thousand. Raise your head, Isaiah, and speak. Lord, have you seen the Assyrian chariots? There are many of them. Go to Jerusalem and announce my wish to the king. But Lord, you have already sent me to Jerusalem. King Akkad's is dead. Carry your faith to the new one. I will go, Lord. I will do according to your will. Obedient to the command of Jehovah, Isaiah goes back to Jerusalem. Hezekiah men are destroying the gods of stone, and Isaiah's heart is joyful. The idols fall one after the other. The heart of the prophet fills with joy and hope. He runs to Jerusalem, where the people are terrorized. Blessed be the name of Ezekiel, the new king. Why are the people returning to the city? We're scared. Assyrians already destroyed 42 cities. But Jehovah is with us and we have nothing to fear. When they reach Jerusalem, they'll burn it down. Back! Oh, Back! The king the king the Assyrians are frightened! Come on, open the, open gate. the gate! Why doesn't the king open want to pay tribute? Right. The Assyrians right. are out of the gate! The king's got to kill us! Who are they? The Assyrians are our friends. Hezekiah closes the gates of the city. Isaiah joins the king and his elderly counselors. They fear they have to come to terms with the Assyrians. Let us gather the gold between us to appease the greed of the Assyrian king. Your generous is always my old friend, but it won't be enough. On my part, my king. I brought my gold. This is all my family has. I am Isaiah, my king. Huh? Hmm. The prophet! Where's he been all these years? What's you doing here, then? To ask for the impossible. He's carrying the word of the Almighty. Shut up! Speak now, prophet! The gold, your gold, isn't enough to pay the Assyrian. It isn't enough! Where's the treasure of the temple now? King Ahaz has already given it to the Assyrian king. We can't ask the Egyptians' help again. Sennacherib has the most powerful army on earth. Then that means we're doomed. He will take us as slaves to his lands. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in man. This is what Jehovah says. Tell us what we should do, prophet. Return to Jehovah. Renounce the gods of stone which are false and full of lies. Return to Jehovah. Renounce the gods of stone which are false and full of lies. What's going on in Jerusalem? Nothing that can stop us. We'll attack the city according to the king's orders. We'll conquer it and the loot will be enormous.
Respect the law of Moses. Shout in your hearts, I have no other God than Jehovah. And he will send his angel to rout your enemies. Look, why did you bring me here to the city walls, prophet? To see the Assyrians and worship the Almighty. Yes, it looks very still. They could be asleep. They're not asleep. Those who are still alive are running away because the angel of the Lord has passed over them and destroyed their army. Huh? Ooh. What? What? Uh. What? Uh. 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 At night, as if a terrible wind blew, then I couldn't hear anything. What happened? Jehovah led his people by the hand. Their enemies are the enemies of Jehovah. The power of the Almighty is endless, as is his mercy and his eternal love. <laughs> 